Welcome to Spreadsheet Tips. In this one, we're going to take a look at absolute value. Uh, and here what I have is just a spreadsheet. Um, let's just say you're a supervisor and you have, let's see, five employees here and you're trying to decide, you know, what kind of raise you're going to give uh, your employees for the next year. Okay, and you've got a couple different snares and you want to use Excel to go ahead and help you see what kind of impact that's going to have financially to you. So let's use absolute values to kind of help us with this problem. Okay, so let's first take a look at our 2014 bonus. It's the end of 2014. Here's what our employees have earned for the year. Um, and we've decided that we're going to give them a bonus of 1%. Okay. So to use absolute value effectively here, I can say I'm going to build a formula and I'm going to calculate 1% of Jan's wages. So I'm going to take B10 times the 1% bonus I've determined up here. Okay. Now I would like to be able to complete this formula and then just drag it down through Frank, Morgan, Peter, and Lucy. But if I'm going to do that, I really want cell E5 to stay constant, and I don't want my formula to pull that cell down as well. So that's when I'm going to use an absolute value. So I could manually type in, and what absolute value? You need a dollar sign on either side of the column, okay? That's going to um, make it so no matter which way you pull that formula, um, it's always going to look at E5, okay? So that's how you could manually do that. Let me take those dollar signs out. Another way you could do that a little quicker and save yourself some keystrokes is to also hit F4. Just by hitting F4, it knows to drop in those dollar signs on either side of the E. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So Jan's uh, bonus for 2014, 1% of her wages is going to be $250. I can now drag that formula all the way down. Bonuses for the year are going to cost me $1,140 for my four employees. Okay. So when it comes to the, the raise or the increase I want to give them for the upcoming year, 2015, I'm undecided. I don't know if I want to give them a 2% raise, a 3% raise, or a 4% raise. And as a supervisor, what's going to sway me is how much is that really going to cost me over the next year. So we can also use absolute values even when we have changing um, scenarios. And let's run through one of those. Okay. So I'm going to start out doing the same uh, calculation take Jan's 2014 wages, and I'm going to multiply that by my first scenario. So here, I don't want, um, I don't want to put an absolute value to lock that cell in because as I pull my formula across from increase 1 to increase 2 to increase 3, I want um, I want my formula to be smart enough to actually go to scenario two and to scenario three. Okay, but then I'm also going to want to pull my formula down to all the different employees. So in Excel, um, with the absolute value function, you can lock in just a column or just a row. So in this case, B10, looking at um, our employees' wages, what we want to lock in here is the column. Okay, when I pull this formula over to the right, I don't want, uh, I don't want um, this B10 to now become C10 and D10. So if I just want to lock in the column, I can just put a dollar sign in front of B. Okay, so when I pull this formula across, uh, it's not going to leave cell B, okay, which is what I want. But if I pull the formula down, it will move down to Frank, Morgan, and Peter, which is what I want, okay? 
Same thing here with uh, my wage increase. We're looking at cell E4. Here I want the column to move freely, but not the row. So if I put my dollar sign in front of the row, now my, when I pull this formula across, we'll go ahead and move through each scenario, but when I pull the formula down, I'm going to stay on row 4. Okay. Similarly, if I wanted to save some keystrokes, okay, let me just delete my dollar sign here. I could also do F4. Now let's put it on both sides. I can hit F4 again, and now it's going to put it um, right before my row. And if I hit F4 again, it puts it in front of the column. So what I want is the row. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to uh, my row. And all that was done just by hitting F4. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. Now, no matter which way I drag it, whether I drag it across or I drag it down, it should perform the way I want it to. Okay? So I drag it down, and now I'm going to drag it across. Okay? And it looks like it is functioning the way I've designed, but let's go ahead and check it. I'm going to escape, and I'm going to double click on a couple of these. So the first one, yep, it took the 25,000 and it did 2%. So hopefully when I drag, drag my formula down, Peter, it's going to use his wages and still the 2%, which it did. So now when I um, drag the formula across, hopefully we stayed on Peter, but went to the scenario 3, 4% range. So let's, let's double click on this cell, and it did indeed do that. And that was through using the absolute formula by locking down just either the column or the row. And I'm going to go ahead and fix my formatting here. Since I drug my formulas down, sometimes you'll lose formatting, and you can just put that back in. Well, thank you for joining me on this spreadsheet tip. I hope that you find a use for absolute values in your career.